So an iNaturalist, I go by real life ecology. Uh, my name is Jonathan Carpenter, but most of my friends call me JC. That's my, my trail name, I guess. And um, yeah, uh, real life ecology tends to be like the name that actually most people know me by these days because uh, iNaturalist has become such like a major part of my life and my, the science that I do, my career, and uh, all the outdoor education outreach too. So honestly, I tell a lot of people like, oh, I'm, I meet people on the trail and I'm like, oh, I'm real life ecology. I've been in a biodiversity um, since I since I was 19. I wasn't really an early bloomer, but um, when I got into it, I realized it was exactly what I'd been looking for in life. So I just became obsessed, and essentially at that point, just started doing what I realize now is like bio blitzes. You know, um, this year though, we set out to really like try to like make a difference in bio blitz and try to like. Uh, Basically, we wanted to go to as many bio blitzes as we could, and so that way we could try to like discover the patterns that are. Because most people that do bio blitzes don't do more than one bio blitz, or they don't do a bio blitz in more than one place, or maybe just a handful of bio blitzes. So, we were trying to look at well, how how is this concept of bio blitz actually playing out across you know the whole continent or across the whole world? Three facets are science, education and uh, community. And uh, community is kind of the one that a lot of people really don't think of, but that's kind of one of the main constituents of the bio blitz is like bringing people together. And so, so if you think of it like that though, so you have a, a place, a time, and then you've got science, education, and community. With those three facets, you can try to focus what you're gonna do for your bio blitz somewhere in that realm. And I, I break those into facets because if you, if you see the data, and you see how like people go out and do these different things, it becomes pretty obvious that actually education, science, and community, if that's, if that's your goal to, to do you know, either one of these things, they can actually be antagonistic with each other. So a lot of outdoor education, outreach, um, people who try to do uh, bio blitzes have a real issue with trying to simultaneously do science and education at the same time. It's a really, really common issue that we, that we come across a lot. And uh, simultaneously, you can have uh, some bio blitzes that have no community outreach at all. It's literally just like certain people that all know each other, that all come together. And so, so what I say is a bio blitz tries to maximize some degree of those different variables. And so you can say, you can throw out community if you're not a community oriented bio blitz, and you can maybe not have an education focus if you're just like a purely scientific, like hardcore inventory, you can do it like that. Um, but by my definition, you can't do a bio blitz without it having a uh, scientific platform to rest on. And um, once again, we're kind of wrapping around to uh, iNaturalist. So iNaturalist makes it so great for that because not only can you get uh, data that's voucherable, but also it covers all of the different types of data. So you could do a bio blitz that's just mushrooms, but you could also just bring a bunch of people together and like, let's just go discover what's in this state park or county park because there is no data for this place. And uh, if you want to bring a community together, um, it's very powerful. Bringing a community together during a bio blitz always creates lasting relationships that changes, you know, people's uh, partnerships, you know, from from that point on. And so, make that like what your bio blitz is about, but have that scientific platform. Uh, there's this idea in organizing bio blitzes in that we have to organize every single detail for months in advance, and then make this really short-term thing happen. And um, the problem with that is, is it's really not scalable to most people. It's hard for a community to find the funding to pay somebody to like plan something for months in advance for like a one day event. And so what I would say the easiest thing to do to keep in mind to run a really good bio blitz is keep this one thing in mind. The only thing that can mess up a bio blitz is lack of enthusiasm, period. Like if, if, if you come with enthusiasm, your bio blitz will be a success. And if you have some way to uh, put data into a system into iNaturalist, then, um, then it'll be a scientific success as well. The Junior Bug Blitz is um, a concept that I started putting together and like all, all, all the ideas of course don't come from me. It's really from seeing all these different you know, ways that this has played out. But as I mentioned earlier, there's, there's an issue with trying to get science to happen simultaneous with education, particularly with youth. And so noticing that, I, uh, try, I try to figure out a way to make this happen. So my idea is that children are just as good at finding 
critters out there as professional like entomologists or something. I mean, children are great at it. I mean, for whatever reason, they've they've got these you know great curious minds. They're looking around. I think their vision's better as well. You know, the children are really good like at just being naturalists automatically. And so uh, what I realized is, if there was a way that we could take kids out. And instead of trying to focus on teaching them a bunch of stuff, teach them one central factor. And this what I notice is this major uh, issue with like teaching people about ecology is like there tends to be like a general lack of the understanding of just biodiversity. And I, I say that it's to me that's really important because biodiversity is this very tangible uh, part of ecology. It's not theoretical. It's not something that you have to imagine or play out in mathematics. It's something that's literally you put a bunch of bugs in front of it like a kid or anybody and you can start seeing these differences in them. And so biodiversity is innate. It's tangible. And uh, so what I, what I realized is that if we could set up a system just to go out, get these kids to just go explore, teach exploration, just forget about a lot of these other details like that, you know, science or ecology and just focus on like let's just show them how to see things, show them how to find things. And then you get all this information and the kids will find tons of stuff. So I use like uh, vials like this, but you don't have to have any special vials. You can use Ziploc bags, you, people use Petri dishes, you can use anything you want. Ziploc bags are probably the cheapest way to go. Um, but basically you put, you put these uh, insects, so we do, we do insects and slugs and just little things that are like easy to catch. And, um, so we, we put them in there and we bring them all back to a centralized location where the kids can just kind of like look at all of them and we just make the whole experience about like observe biodiversity. And there's different ways that you can do this, but it's pretty easy if you've got like an iNaturalist person there or you can contact like a local photographer to work with you on a project like this from like a photography club, like which everybody has photography clubs around the area. Um, if you can do something like that, once the kids leave even, like you could do the whole program just about biodiversity, and then when the kids leave, you have this plethora of like vials and like critters that, that were found, and then you can just streamline through them and photograph them really fast. It might take you like an hour or something to photograph, you know, 120 species or something like that. But then, you know, using iNaturalist, if you use your phone or you have, um, if you're using the bulk uploader, you can just get that data up really, really fast, and it's, it's a way that um, you can then, if you're working with like a school group, then you can go back and say, now it's on iNaturalist, let's go back into the classroom and let's show the kids like what they found. So there's that potential as well. And so I call that the junior bug blitz. It works every time and um, I, uh, it's great because the kids are always like, when, when, when's the next time we're gonna do this? You know, when, when's our class gonna do this again? And it's great to be able to just say, do you have sandwich bags at home? And they're like, yeah, I do. You just, you can do this in your backyard every day for the rest of your life, and, uh, and kids get into it, and uh, I, I think that um, it works every single time.